Welcome, everybody, to another episode of On Top and Hot. I'm John Zadar, your host, and today is the 4th of July. And to be honest, I don't care what color, race, or religion you are. If you're an American citizen, this holiday is for you. Celebrate that independence, enjoy yourself, and be safe. Now, what I like to do on this show is to share my own personal due diligence with you on hot penny stocks. I trade penny stocks every single day. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on any market. And at the end of the trading day, I normally bring you a hot penny stock for your consideration, a stock you'll probably want to watch over the next couple of days to take gains. Well, the problem with those videos is they've got a shelf life. Time goes by, information changes, and the video just goes outdated. It dies, and then nobody watches it. That's a lot of wasted work, a lot of wasted information. So what I'm going to do today is give you some information that's not going to die or change. This is going to be a green video. doesn't matter when you watch it, you're going to be able to put this information to use. So what we're going to do is take a look at one of my own personal strategies I came up with in 2020. I call this getting ahead in the red. There is a way to pull cash out of your stocks that are in the red. There's hidden equity in there. You do not have to wait for your stocks to hit your average price per share to get money out. This isn't as hard as you think it is, folks. It is a matter of a simple choice, and I'm going to show you how to do this. Using this strategy, you're going to discover that you have many more options and control over your portfolio than you've ever had before. This is going to give you a chance to maneuver out of those hard, locked up, losing positions you've been in for a while. Now, I came up with this strategy in 2020. I had been trading stocks for about two years and most of them were way, way down. And I had been averaging down on them for quite a while. I came into the market March of 2018 and I came in for one reason, the cannabis sector. I had noticed that in December of 2017, the cannabis market exploded, folks. I'm not kidding you. She had high, so high, we have never even come close to him since then. Well, I had a friend in Canada. He had been investing in cannabis the entire year. And the day after Christmas, he became a millionaire off of his cannabis stocks. That's why I got in. And that's all I was trading. I was not diversifying. I wasn't looking at other types of businesses. I was only in cannabis, which was just starting up. They had no dispensaries. They had no products. Heck, they didn't even have any cannabis growing in the ground yet. It was just starting. And over the next two years, it was falling, falling, falling. And I was pouring money in, averaging down, until I got to a point to where I didn't have any more money to average down. I was locked up. All I could do was watch my stock day after day, doing nothing, hoping something would burst so I could get some money because there was a lot of things happening I just couldn't play in. So what I discovered is I did have money I could get a hold of. And I want to show you how you can get to yours. So let's imagine that we are interested in a stock called Kerf an imaginary stock, K-I-R-F. Kerf had news today, hot news, got that stock running. She's going to the moon. So we get in, we buy ourselves 2,000 shares at 50 cents. We got $1,000 worth of shares. Our average cost, 50 cents for those 2,000 shares. But we were a little too eager, got in a little too fast. We jumped in when it was rocketing. This rocket stock ran out of fuel, going up and then crashed back down to earth, falling 50%. She came all the way back to 25 cents. Now, we believe in the company. We're still excited about it. We think that's a big drop and it's probably going to bounce, so we buy some more. Now, to keep this simple, all of our purchases are going to be 2,000 shares, just to keep it simple. So, we buy another 2,000 shares at half the price. We are now investing another 500 bucks, total of $1,500 for 4,000 shares. Our new average is now at 37 and a half cents. Little time goes by and you're shocked to see it falls again. And it's down to 10 cents now. Ay, ay, ay. It is a great price. It's a lot cheaper than what you originally got in for. And you still believe in the company. So we buy some more, another 2,000 shares. These 2,000 shares at 10 cents each cost us $200. Now we've got a total of $1,700 invested, 6,000 shares, and our new average price per share is about 28 cents. Then a month goes by 
and she isn't climbing. She's dribbling slowly, slowly downhill. You wake up, she's at a penny. You've got to be kidding. Now you're really frustrated. But a penny, you can't ignore that price, so you're going to average down again. Now, chances are you'd buy a lot more than 2,000 shares. But just to keep this example easy, we're going to stick to 2,000 shares. You buy another 2,000 shares, that is $20. For the same amount you paid $1,000 for at 50 cents. So now you've got 8,000 shares. You have paid a total of $1,720. And your new average is really sweet. You are down to 21 and a half cents. Brilliant. That's less than half of your original purchase. Now let's say you got lucky. That last purchase at a penny was on the floor. You literally got it on the floor. And she starts bouncing. The very next day, she is up to a nickel. She's gone up 500%. Wow! It's not that exciting, is it? Not when your average price is over 20 cents. Just because it went 500% doesn't mean I'm getting anything out of it. I am so far from my average price. I can't sell anything yet. What a waste. Eh, wrong answer. You can get money out of this if you sell them correctly. See, here's where the problem starts. It's our brokers. Our brokers give us a lot of information on our portfolios. They put all those numbers up there for you, including that average price per share. That's an imaginary number. It really has no value except to put in perspective the value of your holdings for you. But when it comes to trading, buying and selling shares, your average price per share has nothing to do with anything. What they are doing is commingling all your purchases. If you had three different stocks, Tesla, Microsoft and Bing. Are you going to mix all three of those together and say my average price for these companies is this? No, it doesn't make sense. Well, just because you're buying into the same company over and over doesn't mean you should mix all of those purchases together. Each one is its own purchase. You go over to your transaction page, put in a ticker, you'll see every single purchase that you've made on that stock. Well, those are separate purchases and that's how they're going to be sold. They're not being sold on your average price. When you join your broker, by default, the cost basis for selling stock is normally FIFO, first in, first out, like the grocery stores do. You put the oldest products in the front so that they get sold and the newest in the back. Well, that's what they do here. You make a purchase, your first purchase gets in line, your second purchase, third purchase, fourth purchase. Then when you go to sell, they go all the way to the front of the line and grab the most expensive shares to sell first. You don't have to do that. No, they have options. You can choose what you want to sell. Just because you've had four purchases on Kerf doesn't mean you have to sell the most expensive shares first. That is set up by default. Go into your settings, you can change that. Now, I had a hard time finding my settings. You may have to call your broker and see where they're at. They'll probably help you get it all set up. I found I had more choices. <laughs> 2020, I wasn't aware of this. I was at think um, TD Ameritrade back then. I'm at Schwab now. The two companies did a merger about three, four years ago. And when the merger was completed, I got shuffled from TD Ameritrade over here to Schwab. And I just recently changed that. I had forgotten about that. And I see that they have more options for me here. I not only can sell first in, first out. I can also sell last in, last out, which gives me a chance to get my cheapest shares sold first. Or if I've been buying shares on bounces, I don't know if I bought the cheapest shares last. They may have been the second to last. Well, you can choose. Sell my cheapest shares first or sell my most expensive shares first. They even have an option over here at Schwab for tax advantages that when you sell my shares, sell them so I take the biggest loss initially in the front door and I get my biggest gains in the back door. Me, because I don't know when I bought the cheapest shares, I don't know that it's actually the very last purchase I made, I chose to go cheapest shares. So whenever I sell a stock, I know the transaction that I sold the cheapest is selling. Now, you need to know how many shares you bought. You know, if you're buying down that staircase, you bought at 50 cents, 25 cents, a dime, and a penny, and you bought 2,000. Well, we know it's 2,000, but you may have been buying different numbers. 
get into your transactions, see how many you bought for a penny, see how many you bought for a dime. That's all you can sell to get the profit. You sell any more, you're starting to lose money now. Now, you're not really going to see it anywhere on the board on your portfolio. What you're going to notice is your average price per share is changing. Remember, we went from 50 cents down to 37 cents, down to 28 cents, down to 21 cents. Well, coming out is the same way. You built a staircase down to hell. You can use that staircase to get out of hell. You don't have to wait for the price to hit your average price per share before you can make profit. All you got to do is find a transaction, shares you bought that are cheaper than the price right now and sell those shares. That's how you make money, folks. Your average price will then start going back up. It'll go from that 21 back up to 28, back up to 37 until your last stack of shares that you can sell cost you 50 cents. And you're going to have to sell those at 50 cents or you're going to lose money. So we're not talking about how to get rid of the entire holdings for a profit, but how to get money out of these stocks that you put money into, but you don't want to sit around waiting to hit your average price per share. You want to get some of this money out now so you can put it to work somewhere else and make better money somewhere else. So this is a strategy I like, especially when you're in a market like we are right now. Lots of us have been buying stock. We bought it at high prices. It is falling. We've averaged down at strategic points, but still it keeps falling. But it's not just your stock. It's lots of stocks. It's the market sentiment. There are a ton of stocks that are falling, falling, falling right now. And the truth of the matter is a lot of these stocks are falling because they can't get financial backing. Because the price is so low, the market cap is low. Because the market cap is low, they can't get loans and financial backing, which means a lot of these companies are falling off the market onto the expert because it costs about $2 million just to stay on the open market. Doesn't matter how big your company is. That's what the fees are. Paying for all your filings, paying for being on the market, about $2 million for every single company. And if they can't come up with that money, they're going to disappear. They're going to be gone. And you may... You may want to start getting some of the money out of these stocks that have been falling, especially if their market cap is getting lower and lower and lower. It's food for thought, folks. I hope this information helps you. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.